Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I want to do a bit of a recap on the 5 piece French wardrobe challenge which I have just finished. So if you don't know what the 5 piece French wardrobe challenge is, I'll pop a link down to the video that I did when I first started it below, uh, but essentially you're only allowed to buy 5 key items in 6 months. So. I'm going to get started with the pieces that I actually bought and then I'm going to go through and kind of explain to you my thoughts on the whole process. So the first piece that I picked up was a bag and it's the Manso Gabrielle bucket bag and I actually pre-ordered this in September last year so I had to wait a good six months before I could even buy it but absolutely love this. Um, I definitely talk about this a bit more in my other video. In addition to my next item which are the Acne Jensen boots which I've been wearing all winter and recently just had resold. The next piece that I picked up was a bit more colourful. I definitely tended to steer more towards the classics than anything else, but this one I thought would be really fun for spring. So I kind of thought ahead and preempted this purchase for the springtime. And the purchase is this really beautiful lilac floral printed top from Karen Walker. It's really cute. I'll pop a uh, outfit post down below for my blog from when I'm wearing this. Then the last piece that I picked up is actually from Celine and I managed to get this for a very good price. It is this black sort of A-line style dress. It's a midi dress. It's really long. I don't think I can probably show you in the video. However, I have worn this in a blog post. I'll also pop that down below in case you're interested in seeing what this looks like on. So those are the pieces that I got. I actually didn't purchase five items. I did purchase a fifth. However, I ended up returning it just as when I got home um, and I tried it on, I didn't really feel like it was me. It felt too young, too youthful. I didn't really feel like it fit in with what I already had. So I just wanted to kind of share my thoughts on a range of different things that I found while I was completing this challenge. Probably the first thing that I noticed, and this is particularly after I started unsubscribing from all of the e -new from all of the e newsletters that were popping into my inbox, is that I kind of stopped looking at online stores so much. So there were definitely a few that I would still browse, but I wasn't really looking at them as avidly as I had been in the past. I also found that I just steered clear of the shops. I didn't even bother going in, like I wouldn't even know what was in the stores anymore and to me it was kind of a really refreshing break, you know I felt like I didn't have to go in and see what the latest fashions were, I didn't have to know what was on the shop floor, I could just go and enjoy myself the occasional time that I did go shopping. Um, yeah so I definitely found that it changed my approach. Because when I was out shopping, I was being a lot more selective. You know, I'd try something on and then I'd think, well, do I need this? Is this something that I'm going to see myself wearing for a really long time? Um, you know, what is the quality like? Is this worth the money? So those were questions that I really started asking myself as I started looking for new pieces. So again, I do think this ties into my last point. I definitely was looking at quality over quantity. So I, even when it came to buying basics, I was trying to find good quality basics that were at an affordable price. So for me, this kind of meant shopping at Everlane, which I do talk about so, so much. I'm sorry, guys. But I definitely did get most of my basics from there this past six months. Um, but I mean, if you look at all of the items that I picked up, in the course of the last six months, you'll kind of see that I definitely was going for more expensive pieces, but they're all really good quality. I know that they're really well made, and I know that they're going to last me quite a long time. One thing that I'm not completely sold on is whether we're safe from the impulse purchase if you're doing the five piece French wardrobe challenge. I definitely did not stick to my wish list. I, at the very start of the challenge, I put together a wish list of four distinct items and then I had one item free just to kind of get something that I saw that I thought would really work and I ended up getting one item of the four because it was the Manso Gavriel backup bag that I had pre-ordered and everything else ended up being completely different so I definitely didn't stick to my list everything I feel was very much an impulse purchase like the Acne Jensen boots I've been needing black flat leather boots for quite a while and while it was so lucky that I managed to stumble across them and they were a good price, I wasn't planning on buying them. I'm glad I did because I definitely needed them for the winter time but wasn't exactly something I was planning on buying. 
neither was the Karen Walker top, which is really cute, and I particularly like that sort of style top that she does. And the Celine dress was a complete impulse purchase. So I, I was not planning that at all. I definitely do not need more nice dresses because I have quite a few and I don't tend to go out too much. So, I mean, I guess the question is, do I really need that piece? Um, and that's something I definitely want to talk about a little bit as well. So obviously this whole concept of shopping for quality over quantity is, is great in theory, but in practice it doesn't necessarily always happen. You may end up purchasing something that is very expensive, but necessarily not great quality, or you might purchase something that's really expensive that you think you're going to get a lot of wear out of, and then you don't. And I do feel like to some extent that's probably what is going to happen with this lean dress, and I'm starting to question whether or not I need to keep it. Um, and that was really something that I was trying to avoid so I really wanted to avoid that cycle of purchasing things and then selling them which I had really gotten into while I was living at home um, back in New Zealand and I also think to some degree when I first moved over to Sydney because I just went on a bit of a shopping spree and went crazy. I definitely think that your bank balance at the end of the six months is really going to depend on how affordable the quality or key pieces that you're buying for the six months are. So just say for example I decided to buy the Acme Velocite Shilling Jacket, that retails for several thousand dollars, it's not very affordable. And so if I had done that, I definitely would have seen a bigger dent in my bank balance than just based on the items that I have purchased. So yeah, I, I definitely think that I have seen less money going out of my bank balance for things like clothing, uh, which is great because um, if you don't know, I'm getting married next year, so I'm currently in the process of kind of saving up for all of those things like paying for the wedding, wedding photographer, engagement party. Um, I'm definitely lucky I've got most of the big things out of the way, but uh, yeah, I've, I've kind of got that as my main priority at the moment, so I am definitely trying to spend less money on clothing. So in that respect, I have found it really useful and it was a great tool to help myself be a bit more restrained. Probably the thing that I found the most beneficial from doing this challenge is that I was no longer obsessing over what I wanted to buy. So one thing, and I have a little bit of OCD, uh, is um, I would sit there and I would just obsess over something and I would obsess over everything that I had in my wish list. I used to save everything in my bookmarks, which I still kind of do, but I, now I just go through and I cull them and I think a lot more about whether or not I want to buy something. But yeah, I definitely used to spend a lot of time and energy on thinking about things that I wanted to buy and it was not a good use of my time. Now I'm actually doing things in my time like I'm, I'm a bit of a gamer, I'm a bit of a geek, so I've been spending some more of my free time playing video games and I've also been doing a lot more reading. So I've definitely found that I am spending more of my time in a productive way. So for me, that's been a huge change and it's definitely something that I feel like I've got this challenge to thank because it's changed my entire approach to shopping. Um, I, I definitely think that it takes quite a long time to change a habit and to form it and create new habits and that's definitely what I'm currently moving towards. In terms of doing this challenge again, I'm not really sure that I will just because, as I said, I do have all these other expenses. So as a matter of moving forward, I am going to be being a little bit more restrained and definitely not going crazy with the shopping. So I think that I can kind of rely on myself to make sure that I'm only buying a few key pieces per season and it's definitely going to be a lot fewer key pieces as time goes on. Um, one of the other things I wanted to point out with this challenge is, you know, you are setting yourself a limit, but it also could be a goal to reach. So five items, I did at the beginning feel like I had to buy five items, but as time went on, I found myself being more and more happy with what I had bought and thinking, you know, I don't actually need anything else. I've got a really great wardrobe, I've uh, got lots of key pieces, I'm not desperately looking for something else to wear and everything is in good condition. So. Uh, I didn't feel that pressure to purchase a fifth piece and I'm so glad because I had picked up a dress from Karen Walker and it was just this really cute smock dress and I returned it and because so I brought it home and I thought do I, do I keep this, do I not keep this, this is my fifth item and I'm so glad I decided to return it because I think keeping it would have been a huge mistake. So yeah, it's one of those things where you've got to be really careful to make sure that you don't fall into that trap. 
I hope that this video has been helpful for anyone out there who is looking to do the five piece French wardrobe challenge. If you do do it, good luck. I hope that you find it really easy and don't struggle at all like I had thought I was going to. Um, and I guess if you are new, please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.